Today, we are going to be taking a look at a test prep question on substance dependence. Hello, and welcome back to my channel, Mental Health with Melissa. I'm Melissa. I am a licensed clinical therapist, LCSW to be exact, a clinical supervisor, a PhD psychology research student. And if you're new here, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more content like this. I post new videos every single Sunday and Wednesday. And subscribing to my channel and liking my videos really helps me get more content out there for you, gets me um, more mental health information out there to our communities of color, and a lot of information about mental health professions, and particularly LCSW test prep as of late, um, all for free, all free study material and LCSW test prep questions. Um, my prerogative behind it is really that I just like sharing this information. I know that there's a lot of social workers new to the field and hoping to study to get their licensure and um, more information sometimes is better than less so here it is and um, for more LCSW test prep material again please like and subscribe. Today we are going to be taking a look at a test prep question on substance dependence. Because there's a lot of information in this video, I'm going to be splitting it up into two parts. So this is gonna be the first part and the second part will have the LCSW test prep question. So please stay tuned for that and definitely feel free to watch both parts. The next part will be coming on Wednesday. I wanted to get some information out there to you about substance use disorders and what the criteria um, are right now, or criteria is right now in the DSM-5 to meet a substance use disorder diagnosis. Um, in one of my previous positions, I worked as an th addiction therapist that worked with a lot of our population um, diagnosed with co-occurring uh, disorders and co-occurring disorders means that um, somebody is diagnosed with a substance use disorder along with a mental health related disorder. So I um, have some background working with this population. So before we get to the LCSW test prep question, I wanted to give you some study material um, that may be helpful. And you probably can find this on the web or if you purchase any LCSW test prep material, you're gonna get this information on there likely as well, but I thought that it would still be a good idea to uh, take a look at this. So a substance use disorder is defined as a pattern that um, includes either inappropriate use of alcohol consumption or any other illicit substance or even um, a misuse of a prescribed substance that results in some sort of impairment in somebody's daily life um, and that causes any sort of distress or dysfunctional um, sort of concern. So somebody that is diagnosed with substance use disorder will often have to continue using um, despite um, what the consequences are or any of the health related concerns. So according to the DSM-5, um, somebody that is uh, diagnosed with substance use disorder will have at least two of the following in this list here for a given substance um, within the same 12 month period. So um, you can read through this list, but if you're more of an auditory learner, I'll go ahead and read through it. Taking the substance in larger amounts for longer than you, me you meant to. Um, wanting to cut down or stop using the substance, but not being able to. So the first one is really kind of like tolerance. I'm sure that um, you've heard this before, uh, you know, if somebody's drinking and their tolerance gets higher, meaning they don't need, uh, or they need to drink more alcohol. Maybe um, somebody was able to just drink a beer and uh, 
feel intoxicated with that but now because they've been drinking so much they have to drink at least two or three beers now because the tolerance is so high so i'm sure you've you've heard that um sort of verbiage before wanting to cut down or stop using the substance but not managing to so that's really showing us that there's a clear dependence to the substance or the drug spending a lot of time getting using or recovering from use of the substance so um, if somebody's, I know that uh, sometimes when you overconsume, there may be a hangover the next day. Um, but people that don't have a substance use disorder or don't have a dependence to substances can quickly recover from that, maybe after a day or so of getting rest. But somebody that has an active uh, use disorder may have a really hard time doing that. Cravings and urges to use a substance. So really that strong urge and craving like this number four states to um, drink or to take whatever it is that uh, the substance is, that is the um, drug of choice. Not managing to do what you should at work, home, or school because of substance use. So it clearly is affecting um, different areas of one's life continuing to use even when it causes problems in relationships. So that's something that we see um, with people that are really struggling in the, their disease um, and an addiction. It does cause clear issues with um, any sort of relationship if you are struggling with that dependence. Giving up important social, occupational, or recreational activities because of substance use. So this is kind of just an extension of some of the stuff up here that we've already talked about. Using substances again and again, even when it puts you in danger. So um, sometimes there are specific substances um, such as stimulants that may make somebody more impulsive. So that's an example. Continuing to use even when you know you have a physical or psychological problem that could have been caused or made worse by the substance. So that can be kind of um, a, um, in addition to what I was telling you about uh, working with co-occurring disorders. So even if there's other um, psychological issues or even medical concerns somebody's still using um, because of the substance dependence needing more of the substance to get the effect that you want so we talked about that the tolerance which is the same thing up here and development of withdrawal symptoms which can be relieved by taking more of the substance so um, if you have heard of delirium tremens so delirium tremens happens when um, somebody is uh, withdrawing from alcohol, so they have the shakes, and a lot of the time what people that have that dependence on alcohol will do is they'll drink to help stop the shakes. Um, and so it's really important in a situation like that, that if somebody really wants to get off of the alcohol, that they do so um, in a medical detox uh, manner. Otherwise, it can be very dangerous when somebody's coming off of um, alcohol or detoxing from alcohol. And so as a side note, um, before we get into more of the information, I want to add a disclaimer that if you are working with somebody that um, is really deep in their addiction, um, has been diagnosed, or even if they haven't been officially diagnosed and there's concern about detox um, or uh, just the amount of uh, medical concern that might be coming up, we always want to refer to a medical provider or call emergency services if there is um, any sort of medical uh, issue or detox concern with the client or the patient. Um, or again, um, making sure that we can really refer them as appropriate and connect them to the appropriate medical uh, facility because we uh, do have a very specific role as social workers and as therapists and we really want to make sure that we're not practicing out of our scope of practice. So we can definitely uh, provide the therapeutic services but if there's anything coming up that um, is med that requires medical attention or evaluation, then it's always going to be very imperative to refer. So let's go ahead and get into some more definitions. Alrighty, so here um, 
The DSM-5, I'm just going to read this, allows clinicians to specify how severe or how much of a problem the, I'm just going to use the acronym SUD is, depending on how many symptoms are identified. So two or three symptoms indicate a mild substance use disorder, four or five, moderate, um, six or more, a severe. So kind of depending on who the individual is and uh, again, what we talked about in some of these criteria up here gives us a better idea of the um, the problematic uh, standpoint um, that your client is in. So let's go ahead and get into some definition words. So substance intoxication is when somebody is um, has already taken the substance or has um, ingested the substance and as a result uh, the person has a changed behavioral or psychological state um, because of it currently being in their system. So an example of this is somebody that um, is drinking, for example, and has had four shots of tequila. So they're likely not going to be sober. They're likely going to be in an intoxicated state, slurring their words. So that's what we mean when we say substance intoxication. Substance withdrawal is um, a very substance specific behavioral change and psychological change and even physical change um, due to somebody coming off of um, that substance um, and after using it or, for example, drinking it for a long period of time. So if we're using that same example of alcohol, if somebody uh, has a very severe dependence to alcohol, um, withdrawal for them may look like having shakes. And so it's always gonna be important to uh, refer to the appropriate medical provider. Now I wanna get into some um, information about the different types of substances. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more content like this. Stay tuned for the second part of this video coming to you on Wednesday. It was quite a lengthy video, so I thought it would be better to split it up into two. The second part will have the LCSW test prep question and also more information about the different types of substances, um, stimulants and depressants and everything kind of in between. So again, please like and subscribe and don't forget to wait for that second part of this video. Um, also, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions at all. Thank you so much. And don't forget, managing mental health matters.